hey everyone welcome back to the channel today i've got something really cool to show you the maivo k1687 p2 a usb 3.2 gen 2 type c enclosure for your m2 ssds it's the perfect solution if like me you've got an extra ssd laying around after an upgrade recently i upgraded my 2021 lenovo legion 5 with a 2TB ADATA SSD, link to that review is in the description, and that left me with a 512GB drive that I didn't want gathering dust. So I decided to turn it into a high-speed external SSD, or as I like to call it, a super flash drive. To do that, I picked up this Maivo M2 SSD enclosure. Let me walk you through it step by step, and then we'll see how it performs. In the box, you get everything you need. Screws, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a mini screwdriver, warranty card, manual, and a blue thermal pad for keeping things cool. Let's start with the design. The case itself is made of solid black ionized aluminum with a ribbed surface. That's not just for looks. It actually helps increase the surface area for better heat dissipation which is super important when using high-speed SSDs. On one side, you've got the Maivo logo and the USB 3.2 marking, but other than that, it's pretty minimalistic. Up front, there is a removable cover that gives you access to the M2 slot inside. This enclosure supports both SATA and NVMe M2 drives in all common sizes 2230, 2242, 2260 and 2280. It's pretty versatile. For anyone wondering why use an SSD in an enclosure over a traditional USB flash drive or a hard drive, the answer is speed and durability. Unlike flash drives, SSDs are engineered for heavy duty use, meaning they handle larger file transfers without overheating or slowing down. If you're dealing with 4K videos, high-res photography, or even gaming libraries, an SSD enclosure like this can make a huge difference. Flash drive just can't keep up with the high-speed transfer rates and sustained performance that an SSD provides. And speaking of speed, according to my Evo, this thing can push up to 10 gigabit per second, thanks to the Realtek RTL 9210B controller inside. It's a pretty reliable controller and everything inside looks clean and well built. One cool feature on the board is the addition of copper pads which help dissipate heat. These are small but add an extra layer of heat management that's essential especially if you're going to use your SSD for longer periods or with large files. The installation process is super simple. You just insert the SSD at a 45 degree angle, line up the notches and then push it into place. Once it's in, secure it with the included standoff and screw, easy. Next comes the thermal pad. Initially, I thought it might go between the SSD and the board because there are copper pads on the PCB. But if you do that, there is no contact between the two, so that's a no-go. Instead you place the thermal pad directly on top of the memory chips and controller. Here is a pro tip. If your SSD is still under warranty, you might want to leave the sticker on. Mine isn't, so I peeled it off for better contact with the thermal pad. Now, one thing I noticed is that there isn't perfect contact between the SSD and the aluminum case, which could affect cooling, but more on that later. And don't forget to peel the plastic film on the other side of the thermal pad, otherwise it may not work properly. After that, you just slide the board back into the aluminum case, screw the front cover, and if you want, you can add the finishing cap for a cleaner look. To give you a bit of a deep dive into why cooling is such a big deal with SSDs, unlike traditional hard drives, SSDs generate heat directly from the controller and memory chips which means if they're not well cooled, they can throttle, slowing down significantly to prevent damage. For NVMe SSDs especially, 
keeping them cool can be the difference between fast, reliable performance and frustrating slowdowns. This is where the Maevo ripped aluminum design is really helpful. It's subtle but provides that additional efficiency for dissipating heat into the surrounding air. Alright, now for the fun part, the test. I ran the SSD through Crystal Disk Mark 8 for some synthetic benchmarks and in SEQ1M HQT1 mode, that sequential read and write with 8 cues and 1 thread, this is the sequential test that reads or writes large blocks of data in a linear fashion. It uses 8 cues and 1 thread to simulate multitasking scenarios with large data blocks. This mode shows the SSD's maximum throughput in high demand environments. I hit 953.98 MB per second for reads and 936.46 MB per second for writes. Then in the SEQ1M Q1T1, similar to the previous test, but with only one queue and one thread. This mode simulates a simpler, more common usage scenario, where operations are executed one after another, typical for tests like copying large video files. I'm getting 777.71 MB per second for read and 807.26 megabyte per second for write. And surprisingly, the write speed is higher than the read speed. Usually this can happen due to caching and buffering mechanism. Some SSDs use caching techniques like SLC or single level cell caching to speed up write operations. And I think this is what actually happened when the drive has available cache space, it temporarily writes data in the faster cache area, which can boost write speed, particularly for smaller random writes so I think this is what happened with the SCQ1M and especially with the R&D 4K Q1T1, which is almost double the difference between read and write speeds. Then in the R&D 4K Q32T1, this is a random test that measures how the drive handles small 4 kilobyte blocks of data scattered across the SSD. It uses 32 queues and one thread simulating scenarios involving high multitasking such as system tasks and applications that constantly access small files. I'm getting 268.03 megabyte per second for read and 246.74 megabyte per second for write. The R&D 4K Q1T1 test, a similar random test but with only one queue and one thread representing the most typical usage scenario for SSDs, reading and writing small, scattered blocks of data sequentially without heavy multitasking. This is crucial for evaluating the drive's performance in everyday tasks like OS booting, launching programs, or accessing configuration files. I'm getting 28.8 MB per second for read and 56.5 MB per second for write. Again, the write speed is higher than the read speed, which seems to be abnormal, but seems to be common when testing this SSD. Not bad at all. The SSD's operating temperature settled around 50 degrees Celsius. Honestly, that's really solid performance. It's way faster than any typical flash drive, hard drive, or even an external SATA SSD. However, if we compare it to the SSD speed when installed, Inside the laptop, we're looking at about a third of its full potential. So what's my verdict? While there are some cooling issues, the thermal pad doesn't sit quite flush with the case, which means higher temps than I'd like. The speed is excellent for an external drive, especially compared to slower options like flash drives or hard drives. For an NVMe SSD, there is room for improvement, but hey, if this enclosure had a 20 gigabit per second interface and a more powerful controller, the price would probably shoot up as well. So for what it is, the MyEvo K1687P2 is a great little enclosure and I think is definitely worth considering if you need fast external storage. That's it for today. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more tech reviews. This is Pulsar Tech, 
See you next time. Bye now.